There are sources out there that tell you that eating too much protein is bad for you. Now, bad for your kidneys, they say, bad for your bones, increases your risk of cancer, among other things. Now, this is not the case. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share with you 11 signs you're not getting enough protein and that increasing your protein needs to be prioritized in your diet. Now, for most people, uh, they are eating far too many carbs and not enough protein to build and repair tissues. So because every single part of your body, from your bones, to your brain, to your muscles, to your kidneys, everything needs protein. So knowing these signs is going to help you detect uh, if you're protein deficient. So now, before we get started, if you don't mind, uh, if you haven't already um, subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. And please make sure you click that little notification bell so you never miss when I release a new video or when I go live. And when you click that notification bell, just select all so you are notified of all videos. So let's delve into the 11, uh, these 11 signs of protein deficiency. So number one, increased muscle loss. So a very common sign of protein deficiency is muscle loss or an inability to gain muscle. So this is very common in the elderly especially as they lose their muscle mass due to insufficient protein intake and also a lack of weight-bearing exercise, strength training, uh, or resistance training, if you want to call it. Number two, decreased bone strength. So this is very important, especially if you've been diagnosed with osteopenia or osteoporosis, as you are most certainly not eating enough protein in your diet. So people have the idea that bone is made up of basically just calcium, when in fact, bone is actually made up of protein with an atom of calcium stuck in the protein matrix. So if you are not getting enough protein, uh, your body will not be able to basically keep bone strong. So protein is a massive component to building strong uh, bones and keep them healthy. Number three, decreased wound healing. So if you've been eating low protein for years, you most likely have gotten used to slow wound healing, but you may not uh, recognize it as slow as that's basically just what you're used to. So the more protein you consume, the faster you're going to heal from wounds and cuts and bruises and abrasions. Number four sign of um, protein deficiency is strange hunger and cravings. So your body is looking for a very short list of nutrients from your diet. It's looking for amino acids from proteins, it's looking for fatty acids that come from fats and as well as vitamins and minerals. So it's basically only those four nutrients our bodies need to thrive and function optimally. So if you're not getting enough protein in your diet, your body is, gonna, is basically going to increase your hunger signals and your cravings to try to get you to meet those nutrient requirements. So low protein intake can cause this to happen. Number five is britter uh, sorry, brittle uh, nails, hair, and skin. So if your skin is very dry, flaky, and thin, your nails like break and are easily, uh, they're very brittle, and your hair breaks and also is very brittle, uh, or you even have hair loss for no apparent reason, these are all signs of protein deficiency. So you've got to be aware of what's going on with our hair, skin, and nails. Number six sign of protein deficiency is edema and swelling. So any kind of form of edema or swelling in the feet and ankles is an end stage sign that you have been protein deficient for so long that your body is about to give up. Number seven, decrease in mood. If you're always down in the dumps or always have a negative mood, this is a sign of protein deficiency. Number eight, frequent infections. So if you have a frequent, uh, or if you're having frequent kind of upper respiratory tract infections, frequent bladder or skin infections, this is a sign you are protein deficient. Now our bodies use protein to heal wounds and fight infections. So, excuse me, your immune system must have adequate protein to do this, whether it be a bacterial or viral infection it's fighting against. So. If you are not eating enough protein, you basically are going to have more infections, basically more infections in number, and you can have more severe, long-lasting infections. Number nine, stunted growth. So this is obviously more specific to children as they're growing up, 
but if a child is not getting uh, enough protein, then their growth in part is going to be stunted. So super important for kids, growing kids, uh, not even just for adults, of course, but kids especially. We need to be getting our kids adequate protein intake. And then number 10, insomnia. So in the sleep literature, it's actually quite well known that a protein deficiency can lead to insomnia. So if you're having trouble like getting to sleep and it's been like that maybe for a while, it very well could be that you have a protein deficiency that is at the root uh, of that issue. So populations basically who are at most at risk for protein deficiency are anyone who's following the standard American or you can call it the standard Canadian diet, the Canadian Food Guide, the American Heart Association Guidelines, or the American Diabetes Association Guidelines. So, but specific populations who are at risk, so that was generally like, you know, populations that would be at risk that would be following these certain guidelines, but now specific populations would firstly be the elderly, as we talked about earlier. Um, with the elderly, their taste buds change as they get older and just don't have the taste for meat anymore. Secondly, women who are notorious for eating salad and not steak, and especially um, at risk population would be pregnant women and breastfeeding women. Uh, they need to go out of their way to make sure they're getting enough protein, because uh, not only for themselves, but for their growing child or the child that they're breastfeeding. And lastly, as we talked about earlier, children due to the stunted growth issue. So if you want your child to grow up strong, tall, beautiful and smart, they must get enough protein in their diet. Now, the best sources of protein I recommend are meat, poultry, fish, seafood, eggs, dairy, including cheese. Okay, so basically anything animal-based. And what you want to aim for is one gram of protein per pound of ideal body weight or two grams of protein per kilogram of ideal body weight. And when I say ideal body weight, I mean the weight you desire to be, not your current weight. So let's just say you are, uh, let's say you're female, you're 180 pounds, your desire to be 135, you should eat um, one gram of protein per pound of that ideal body weight. So you want to be aiming for 135 grams of protein per day, just to give you a ballpark. Now I recommend obtaining this amount of protein through either a low carb, keto, or carnivore diet. Now, hopefully this was helpful on 11 signs of protein deficiency and how to steer clear from it. If you know of anyone that may benefit from this, please consider sharing it anywhere on social media as you may help them resolve their health, health issues or at a minimum, drastically improve them. Now, I appreciate you watching this video. Thank you so much. If you liked it, please consider uh, pushing that like button. And um, as I mentioned earlier, if you can, uh, if you like it and you want to subscribe for more videos, just hit that subscribe button and then click that notification bell and select all. And as always, if you have ideas for future videos or you have any questions for me, please make sure you comment below as this helps me to know what videos to create and as well as what you'd like to learn. So keep it locked in here on my channel. I look forward to coming to you in the next video.